For nearly 100 years, the Chicago District Golf Association has stood for excellence in this extraordinary game of golf. Now the CDGA's magazine comes to life on TV. Chicago District Golfer celebrates the traditions of the past while connecting with the present. It's a golf show that is sure to inform and to have a little fun along the way. For what's important in Chicago golf, it's Chicago District Golfer TV. Today, we take a drive to the Quad Cities for some superb golf. Bolingbroke's Carl Rubito stops by with a stroke-saving lesson. We'll see if the amateurs beat the pros at the 50th annual Radix Cup. Club champion explains the key in choosing wedges. We'll have the story on a USGA event coming to Olympia Fields. And we'll chat with University of Illinois grad and PGA Tour star Steve Stricker. Chicago District Golfer TV is presented in part by your Chicagoland and Northwest Indiana BMW Centers, Bose Creek Country Club, Wilson Golf, the Bolingbrook Golf Club, and Club Champion. Hello, I'm Jill Carlson and welcome to Chicago District Golfer TV. The Quad Cities golf landscape's very intriguing. The rates are reasonable. There are new courses like Fire Lake and once private clubs that are now public. Let's take a spin to this destination just a couple of hours away from Chicago's western suburbs. The Ultimate Driving Tour is brought to you by BMW. One of the state's top rated courses is the TPC Deer Run in Silvis, Illinois, home of the PGA Tour's John Deere Classic since 2000. When the Deer's Hewitt family bestowed the land to the tour, they wanted no earth to be moved in order to protect and preserve this splendid piece of property. And when the Deer family donated it basically to the tour for the golf course, they said, we wanted public access and we don't want houses on it. So that allowed the architect, D.A. Wybring, to route it on this beautiful, mature 400-acre parcel with these great hardwood trees uh, where the best routing for the holes are. They don't have to worry about trying to fit a, a street down there or sell lots. And because of that, there was almost no earth moved compared to what a modern golf course uh, you know, does anymore. And it sits here so naturally, it looks like it's been here for 75 years. Situated high above the Rock River, TPC Deer runs both a pleasure and a challenge to play. And what's really amazing is that you can play this PGA Tour course for between $50 and $75. Now that's a deal. For those used to green fees in uh, bigger areas like Chicago, uh, this is a heck of a bargain. Uh, and it's an easy drive really from, uh, from Chicago. Uh, we're so blessed here in the Quad Cities to have great golf courses, but this one is, uh, you know, really well respected by, by uh, tour players. Uh, you can play it, uh, it's public access uh, all year long, anywhere between $50 and $75 is kind of the range. The John Deere Classic's been in the Quad Cities for 41 years now and is number one on tour in charity per capita. Traveling a half hour south of the Quad Cities, you'll find brand new Fire Lake National. Orchestrated by Chris Rule of the Jack Nicklaus design team, this course is a breath of fresh air, aptly described as mountainous links. Everyone knows what a Lynx golf course is. If you happen to watch the British Open, you see it's a lot of um, native fescue grass, not a whole lot of trees. That's kind of what you'll see out here at Fire Lake National. But a lot of also elevation changes, um, a lot of uh, elevated tee shots, elevated greens. That's you know kind of what we have going on out here. Just um, great topography. Uh, Nicholas Design used absolutely everything that they could out here. Uh, the lake as well, we have two, uh, two lakes that they use uh, that comes into play, Car Lake and Fire Lake, which is the lake uh, directly behind me. Um, so they just have done an awesome job. Fire Lake dispels the rumor that a course needs to be long to be good. It measures out at more than 6,400 yards, playing to a par of 70. The four sets of tees make it accommodating and fun for all. We're trying to cater to absolutely every demographic there is, you know, that's playing golf, um, you know, juniors, ladies, um, the older golfer, the senior golfer, um, and the big boys that, that like to hit it long. So yeah, I, it's a golf course for everybody, really. And it, it's, um, again, just another testament to, uh, to Fire Lake. 
The boating activity is a pleasant distraction as you try to navigate Fire Lake National. While memberships are available, public play is welcomed, and you won't have to empty your pockets to play this beautiful track either. It'll cost you just $45 to tee it up during the week, $55 on weekends. We wanted to, again, fill a niche in the Quad Cities that, um, you know, we thought was missing. Um, and with that price, you know, we, we want people to come out to Fire Lake and play here every week. Um, we just don't want it to be a, a, a one-time deal and say, well, that golf course was great, and we're just going to go and, and play our regular golf course every week. We, uh, we definitely want the people to come back. Fire Lake is just opening up now, so get out there and play this pristine new gem. We have a lot of golf morsels ahead, including a visit with one of the PGA Tour stars ranked among the top five. And up next, we'll find out who took home bragging rights in the annual Radix Cup. Up to 32 miles per gallon, chances are you'll need refueling before it will. The BMW 5 Series, the ultimate driving machine. The Lesson T is brought to you by the Bolingbrook Golf Club. As a teacher, all the time, we're asked, now where should I be here? Where should I be here? How does my downswing? Where should my leg? Where should this or that be? What I'm going to try to do today is give you a really concise way to simplify your swing thoughts. And the way I'm going to do it is refer to it as the five club faces of the swing. The first club face is your real golf club. At impact, your golf club has to be facing the target, obviously, and we're going to make a divot in front of the golf ball. So that's the number one club face. Second club face is the back of your left hand. It's going to be facing a target, making a divot in front of the golf ball. Third club face is the palm of your right hand. Same thing. It's compressing the ball, hitting down on it, making a divot. The fourth club face is going to be your face, literally the side of your face. So as you're starting your downswing, allow your face to move. So you're going to feel like you're compressing the ball with the side of your left face. It's going to be in sync with one, two, three, and now four. It's very common to keep your face, your head back. All of a sudden, the fourth club face is out of position. It's gonna affect everything else. The fifth club face is the inside of your right leg. So the idea is when you get to this point in the downswing, the inside of your right leg, the fifth club face, and the club shaft are gonna hit the golf ball at the same time on the same angle. So we've got five club faces. If we get them all going in the same direction at the same time, the chances of hitting a superior shot are quite good. So club face is number one. Back of your hand is number two. Front of your right hand is number three. Your face is number four. Inside of your leg is number five. In 1962, Harry Radix started a unique match play event which promoted competition between professionals and amateurs in the state of Illinois. Just last month, the Radix Cup celebrated its 50th anniversary on the classic Donald Ross design at Oak Park Country Club. This annual one-day event pits the Illinois Professional Golf Association versus the Chicago District Golf Association. Here, 24 of the best players in the land of Lincoln compete for bragging rights and a chance to win the coveted cup. I, I can't say enough about uh, uh, about the format, the fact that Mr. Radix was uh, uh, thoughtful enough to, to keep this uh, progressive and moving on in his name. It, it's a great opportunity for the amateurs and the pros to, to take a day out and play with each other, get to know each other. I think it's great, great fun and, and, and good for the game of golf. The IPGA had some good young bloods on its squad, but were led by veteran stalwart Connie DiMattia of Cantini Golf. The CDGA side had players with a little more experience, including 2010 Player of the Year, Todd Mitchell. It's a great event. This is, I believe, my ninth year playing in it. And it gives us a chance to not only, you know, meet some of our peers that, you know, have taken up the game in a professional manner and have helped all of us 
and numerous other players and, and people out there learning the game, whether it's for the first time or you know the guy that plays five times a week. Um, it, it's nice to get out there and play and, and to get to know these guys in, in a, a very competitive situation. The CDGA boys took control of this in-state rivalry early on, but Jordan Schroeder tried to keep his IPGA guys in it. Here from the thick rough on number 10, he cozied it up within five feet. He went on to make birdie and win the hole. Check out the CDGA Steve Sawtell on number 12 with a nifty little sand shot leading to an easy tap-in. Matt Slowinski of Glen Oak Country Club showed his putting skills, dropping this bomb on 10 for a great birdie, hoping it would lead to a back nine charge by the professionals. Of course, last year uh, it was quite, you know, a little bit of reverse situation. The professionals uh, did better. But you know, you got to gotta look at the fact that a lot of these amateurs are probably almost more professional than the professionals are. You know, they were trying to sell their stuff and get their stuff done and these amateurs are playing some plays every week you know so they're they're pretty good they're pretty good every year for a half century the radix cup's been contested here at oak park country club this classic donald ross designs the perfect test for these seasoned players it plays exactly the way a donald ross course should play it's very penal if you make the wrong decision off the tee and it puts a premium on your short game uh, pitching, chipping, bunkers, and putting. Consistent 15 to 20 mile per hour winds made the layout a stern test, but in the end, it's the amateurs from the CDGA who prevailed over the professionals by a score of 12 and a half to five and a half. We had a very tough match today. Connie DiMattia played awesome, and along with his partner, Steve Oreck, and uh, you know, you can't, it's, you can't discount them. They just, they play great golf. Illinois golf is strong. Uh, both on the professional side and the amateur side. Uh, we come from a, a large metropolitan area and I think that says enough about the golf courses, the conditions, and, and the talent pool that we, uh, we draw from. Host of the Radix Cup, Frank Bruno, couldn't be prouder of how his course held up. After all, he grew up here, first as a caddy, then assistant pro for 15 years, and now the head professional. This is what we live for. Uh, the camaraderie, the fellowship, the competition. This, this is uh, what Harry Radix would have uh, liked us to do, and we're doing it. Here's a look at the final results of the 2011 Radix Cup. The Rule Book is presented by the Bose Creek Country Club in Elgin, Illinois. In a match play tourney, Steve putts his long birdie attempt to within a couple of feet of the hole. His playing partner Jamie says, that's good. Thinking the hole has been conceded, Steve picks up his ball. Jamie quickly says, what are you doing? I didn't concede the putt. Steve says, but you said it was good. Jamie counters and says, I said the putt was good, as in that's a good putt. Now what? Does Steve lose the hole or incur a penalty for lifting his ball without marking it first? What do you think? We'll be back with the correct ruling after this break. Bose Creek Country Club has set the standard for public courses with a private club feel. This exquisite 18-hole championship layout offers the exclusive member four day concept. Pay just one fee and you get unlimited golf with a cart and full use of the bent grass practice facility. Plus there's Porter's Pub, a casual English style restaurant and bar that will complete your day the way you want to play. It's all here at beautiful Bose Creek Country Club in Elgin, Illinois. Welcome back to the Rule Book, brought to you by Bose Creek Country Club. Thinking his putt had been conceded, Steve lifted his ball instead of holing out. Has he incurred a penalty or even worse, lost the hole? In this case, the answer is no. In Decisions on the Rules of Golf, Decision 2-4-3 states in part, if a statement made by an opponent could reasonably have led another player to think his next stroke had been conceded, without penalty, the player should simply replace his ball as near as possible to where it was. Since Jamie's statement sounded like a concession, there's no harm. Now that we've finally had some decent weather to play, it's time to fine tune our game with our scoring clubs. Yes, we're talking wedges with our friends at Club Champion.
There are plenty of high quality wedges available these days. The key is having options with different lofts and that all important bounce in your bag. Some customers play one wedge, some play two, even three wedges. Once we have the gapping uh, correct, we have to determine what amount of bounce will go on each one of those clubs. So for instance, if a player plays three different wedges, he or she will have three different bounce configurations on each one of those wedges. Uh, if they're playing a bunker club, it'll tend to have a little bit more bounce. Maybe a gap wedge and a lob wedge will tend to have a little bit less. Some players tend to sweep their shots, so they like a club that doesn't dig too deep into the ground. A sweeper, you'd probably want something with a little less bounce so that you can actually pick the ball without having the bounce inhibit your ability to get the ball to strike higher on the face where you want it. Then there are other players whose swing is a little steeper. A uh, digger tends to be a trapper and comes into the ball very steeply and usually a little bit more bounce is more effective for them. It keeps the club from digging in. Club champion knows wedges and can point out the exact club which can help you get it closer and help lower your scores. Once we have the bounce, shaft, loft and gapping uh, combinations correct, then we can customize it even further by hand grinding some special sole configurations depending on what kind of conditions they play or any particular golf course. So for instance, a wedge that may work well for you up here in Chicago may work very poorly at a desert or a South Florida course. It's very important to get the correct specs on your wedges to ensure the best contact. Now, if you want to check out the future stars of the LPGA, and clearly I'm not one of them, you can later this month. Olympia Field South Course is hosting the U.S. Girls Championship. The Business of Golf is brought to you by MB Financial Bank. We can learn a great deal about tempo from these young ladies who are all under the age of 18. Michelle Mayer, who will be playing college golf at the University of Illinois in the fall, competed in this USGA event last year. I had an amazing time. It was possibly one of the best tournaments I've ever played in. And it was one of my favorites just because it was the strongest field I'd ever played in. And it took so much work to get there, especially with the qualifier. And making it there was such a big deal. The recently renovated South Course at Olympia should provide a solid test for those teeing it up in the U.S. Girls Championship. The event format itself is a tough test. Two days of stroke play before match play kicks in. You know, this golf course is going to test every part of their game. Uh, you know, and that's what they've been preparing for, and that's why, you know, they're the best in the world, and, and uh, it's at a national level because if there's a weakness in their game, uh, the course will find it. So, uh, you know, the bunkers are tough, the rough is, the rough is up, and, uh, you know, it's going to play a little bit long, uh, not unfair, but uh, you got to play good golf. This South Suburban gem will be played at just over 6,400 yards. Length's only part of the challenge. Speedy greens built into many hillsides add an extra tough element. The greens are undulating and very fast, and it's just an amazing golf course that the U.S. Open was held at. And they're not going to be playing the North Course, but the South Course is just as good, just as challenging. The girls get started with practice rounds July 16th and admission is free for the entire week. Up next, we'll have an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with likable PGA Tour star Steve Stricker. Aren't you tired of buying clubs that don't improve your game? At Club Champion, we fit tour players, top amateurs and golfers of all skill levels who are serious about hitting more fairways and greens and sinking more putts. In your session, our certified fitters will have you test equipment from all leading companies using state-of-the-art technology to find the perfect setup for you. We then build each club to your specs and deliver to you in a timely fashion. Schedule your fitting today at Club Champion to get the edge you need because a better fit means lower scores. Welcome back to Chicago District Golfer TV. Steve Stricker is one of the really good guys on tour and happens to be one of the best players in the world too. Our Dave Lockhart recently caught up with the University of Illinois grad at his favorite PGA Tour stop, the Quad Cities TPC Deer Run. 
Not only is Steve Stricker a good guy, but is also one of the top players on the planet. We caught up to the likable Wisconsin native less than 24 hours after he captured this year's Memorial Tournament. You've moved into top five in the world. Did you ever think in your career that you would get to this point? You know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty surreal at times. You know, uh, the last five years have been pretty good. And, um, you know, it's, it's uh, a thing where I keep plugging away, keep doing the things that I've been doing and keep working hard at it and, and see where it takes me. So I'm very blessed, very excited to be where I'm at in my career. Stricker has captured the last two John Deere classics, including one year ago when he set a new tournament record. He was at the TPC Deer Run for Media Day, where he gave some youngsters tips on the all-important aspects of putting. I'm just trying to get this ball started on a straight line. I'm not trying to hook it, I'm not trying to cut it, and I'm just worried about this little two-foot area right, right in front of me, a foot back and a foot forward, and I'm trying to start that ball on that straight line and then let the ground do the work. Yes, Steve's smooth rhythm certainly leads to putting for dough, but he takes that all-important tempo into every aspect of his game. Yeah, I think tempo is a huge part of, of, of golf, and uh, not only in, in the big clubs like the driver, your long irons, short irons, everything, but also in your putting stroke. And my tempo kind of is the same with, with everything, and uh, I work on that quite a bit. I, I pay attention to my tempo. I think tempo is somewhat overlooked at times, and... Uh, you got to sync everything up. You know, it's it's a game where everything has got to be in tune, and, and tempo is a big key of that. 96 Western Open. You were a fairly young man at the time. You won in convincing fashion at Cog Hill. What do you remember most about that? Um, you know, I remember that tournament a lot. You know, it was, my wife was on the bag then. That was a special time for us uh, down in Chicago, uh, close to close to home for me. Both where I went to school at University of Illinois and and up in Madison. I had a lot of family and friends there at the time, and it was a special uh, moment. And, and to run away with that tournament, I think I won by seven or eight shots, and, and do that in that kind of style is, is always fun to do and, and kind of stress-free when you're coming up the last couple of holes. So uh, I think back to that tournament quite often. The 44-year-old has pretty much made his career a Cinderella story. Not bad for a Badger native who still lives in Wisconsin and went to school down in Champaign. I enjoy my roots, where, I, where I've come from, where I've been, and, and uh, it means a lot to, to get the support of the people of the area, and, and uh, just like here at the Quad Cities, you know, it, it almost feels like home, so I appreciate that. The TPC Deer Run is basically in Steve's backyard just outside of the Quad Cities. It's a traditional Parkland layout that plays right into the hands of the former All-American. You know, um, I don't know if, uh, if it just, uh, the way it sets up off the tee for me, you got to do a lot of... Uh, good things. You got to drive the ball well here to give yourself the opportunities to attack some of these pins. And uh, I've done that over the last couple of years, and I've I've put to, together some good rounds here. I've got some good vibes here. So hopefully, continue that uh, this coming year. It'll be exciting to see if Steve can get the three peat in this month's John Deere Classic. Be sure to check out our website cdga.org to view past shows, maintain your handicap, get course information, and for all that's happening golf-wise in the land of Lincoln. I'm Joel Carlson. Thanks so much for watching Chicago District Golfer TV. Chicago was built on people like you and businesses like yours. Responsiveness, experience, stability. MB Financial Bank, celebrating 100 years. MB makes it our business to understand yours. Providing financial solutions to Chicagoland's middle market companies. MB Red Checking, the personal account that pays you 4% APY. And Wealth Management, expertise in trust services, investment management, and private banking. With locations all over Chicagoland, MB Financial Bank. MB means business, and that's good for your business.